Okay, we'll move on to the, uh, the uh, incident that actually occurred a little earlier than this. Um, this morning at 3.48 a.m., uh, 911 received a call from an individual. Uh, it was a check welfare call. This call ultimately ended up being at uh, 10,607 Golden Quail Drive. When the caller called in, however, he was calling from a cell phone, and therefore we did not have an exact address for the officers to be dispatched to. We were working off of coordinates that we were picking up from the cell phone signal, trying to determine where the officers needed to get to. So it took us a little while to get an exact location for this individual. Again, at 448, they responded to the call on a check welfare. Uh, I'm sorry, that was at 348. Uh, they said the male on the phone was crying, wanting to talk to 911. He appeared to be distraught. Um, he uh, made comments that uh, gave the 911 uh, call taker indications that he may be suicidal. Uh, again, the officers were responding to the scene, trying to get an exact location uh, to respond to. Our first officer arrived on scene at 3.57 a.m and again started searching the apartment complex trying to get the exact location uh, or started searching the neighborhood trying to get the exact location of this incident. Uh, 359, uh, again the officers are still trying to find the location. The 911 call operator is still on phone with this individual, again trying to ascertain his condition, his location, and to keep him on the phone long enough for our officers to get there and attempt to, uh, to help him. At 4.03, uh, we were able to confirm the exact address of this incident, and at 4.10, uh, we get our next information from the officers. They advise that they are at the door. The subject came to the door and had a weapon either in his waistband or at his hand. The officers, when they encountered him, observed this, gave him commands. Uh, the individual uh, information at this point shows did not comply immediately. Our officers attempted to handle this with the use of less lethal force using a taser. Uh, this was ineffective and the subject retreated back into his residence at this point. At 4.11, the subject went back in the residence and then at 4.12, the subject did come back outside. So he entered his residence and then immediately came back outside. He was still armed with the weapon at that point and at that point the officers observed that he had what appeared to be self-inflicted wounds on his arms as well and they put that out over the radio that it appeared as though this individual was injured at this point uh, they actually summoned ems at this point because they knew this individual had these injuries and that they were going to need ems to treat those uh, at this point uh, the officers observed the subject reach for uh, his weapon instead of complying with their commands and the officers at that point uh, fired at the suspect in fear for their safety. Uh, we had three officers involved in this incident that fired their weapons. Uh, the individual was struck uh, and was fatally wounded by those shots. Uh, the officers again called for EMS at 4:15 uh, to uh, get them on scene and the subject was pronounced deceased at 4:26. Uh, what we believe right now is the suspect is a white male in his late 20s. The officers, uh, one of the officers has been with our department for one year. The other two officers have been with our department for two years each. And again, as I mentioned earlier, standard practice, those three officers will be placed on administrative duty while we conduct our investigations. And again, this will be the investigations with our Internal Affairs Division uh, for any administrative issues. Uh, our Special Investigations Unit uh, in conjunction with the District Attorney's Office for a grand jury and then the Office of the Police Monitor uh, is always involved in our administrative investigations of officer-involved shootings as well. So that's the information that we have to this point. Again, this is is uh, a, a difficult day for the Austin Police Department. It's a difficult day for our officers. This is not anything any officer ever wants to be involved in, is having to take a life. But unfortunately, our officers were put in circumstances today where that took place. This is also a difficult day for our community. Uh, not only being a holiday weekend, but any day when a tragic event like this happens is, is, a, is a loss. So uh, our hearts go out to the families of the individuals involved today, both the victim at the Omni behind us, whose, whose life was taken by the suspect, as well as the, uh, the uh, individuals that, uh, that we had to encounter. Uh, uh, 
With that, I'll take any questions. You mind if I jump back to the Omni incident for just a moment? Let me stick on this one first. So all three officers fired the weapon? Yes, our understanding at this point is all three officers observed the exact same threat. They were all three uh, directly in front of the subject when he made that move, and all three of them interpreted that move as an aggressive move that threatened their safety, and all three responded accordingly. All right, if there's no other questions, I'll go back to